Welcome to Belfast, a city that I felt compelled to visit as I learn about the troubles, an ethno-nationalist conflict that was waged between the late 1960s and 1998. I feel ignorant in a way because I came to understand that I was more educated about conflicts further afield in the world and I was relatively uneducated about the problems that existed here in Belfast, relatively on my doorstep. So join me folks, I'm going to take a wander around some of the different communities here. I've also arranged for a local guide to take us round and impart some local knowledge. He's a gentleman who drives a black cab and lived through the troubles. This is not a video that professes to have any expert knowledge on my behalf. I want you, the viewer, to come along with me and learn what life was like during such a tumultuous period of conflict and to see what Belfast is like today, what it's like as a city to live in, both in the Protestant Shankill estate and the other side of the peace wall here that I've been walking alongside in the Catholic Falls Road estate and then also in the city centre which many tell me these days is is very much a neutral zone. Let's explore Belfast. Let's go. So much internet sleuthing has told me that one of the best and most informative ways to see all the different areas, the troubled and historic districts of Belfast is to take a black cab journey around the city. So we're going to take one of those black cabs, it's a rainy day at the moment so I thought what better to do when it's rainy than sit in one of these black cabs, take us around, show us the different murals and explain to us a bit of the history of the sectarian troubles here in Belfast. But tomorrow I'm going to hit the streets some more on my own and meet the people. So let's look at it both ways. Let's look at it by foot and by the traditional, very touristic way of the black cabs. Nice Welcome to meet you. Welcome to Belfast, Thank my you man. so much. I'm fresh off the plane. In 1969, what you have to remember is everywhere that we're going would have looked like this. Little Belfast, two up, two downs. I was nine years of age when our troubles broke out. And my house was slightly bigger than that. Yeah. So what if, now all them streets, where we're going is all been redeveloped. Every street that we're gonna, the, 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 we, we'll be visiting in 1969 would have looked like this. Yeah. And they would have run from the Shangle Road right across to the Falls Road, yeah. all interlinked. And that is where our trouble all kicked off in 1969. Ireland, as a country, has 32 counties. You visit the south of Ireland. Yep. So that is, that is the Republic of Ireland. We were invaded by the English roughly eight and a half hundred to nine hundred years ago and they seen us as savages. We needed to be Christianized. Um, You're not the only place in the world yep, that they did we were, that too. We were the actual first. <laughs> we were the first country that was yeah, invaded. Yeah. When the English invaded, they imposed three rules. The Catholic religion, the bandit, and they burnt all the Catholic churches. They took everybody's land. They um, banned the Irish cultures, especially the Irish language. It was banned. Them three things you will see as the years go on are still in the political mm -hmm. domain. We have always been in rebellion as an Irish people against the English. We've always had trouble. Well, the worst of that trouble came between 1916, the Easter Raising, and the end of the war, the, the end of the the War of Independence, um, roughly about 1919. England were left with this big dilemma. In the Houses of, of, of Parliament, they would have called it the Irish problem or the Irish question. What are we going to do with them? During them years, England were away fighting Germans. Their numbers were low in Ireland and they couldn't contain the trouble within Ireland. So after a very controversial treaty, 26 of our 32 counties was given back to the Catholic Irish and that was called the Irish Free State. It's now called the Republic of Ireland and so that was good if you were an Irish Catholic you had most of your country back. So the petitioned six of the richest counties in Ireland 
the six northern counties, the new country of Northern Ireland was formed as part of the Union. And if you had been one of the 400,000 Irish Catholics trapped behind the petition, behind the new country, enemy lands, you knew you were in for a rough time when you heard the very first Prime Minister declaring to the world at the opening of our, our Parliament buildings that this is a Protestant state for the Protestant people with no Pope here. The way they would have blatantly discriminated against the Catholics in the society here was through the voting system and through employment. A man from the Shankill Road by the name of Ian Paisley, he would have stood on a, a soapbox or preaching to the, the working class. Then civil rights that damn Catholics want. You know, they want to drive us from the country. It's not civil equality. And then several qualities they were looking was the um, equality in housing, employment, education, but most importantly, one man, one vote. You would have had two communities on a collision course. We had the Catholics on the raise, and you would have had the Protestants on the defence. Listen to these politicians that were coming out with statements like, never, 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 no surrender, and we never give an inch. Yeah. This is Britain. That's what led to these communities really going for it. The first question I have is, for all the trouble and all the lost lives mm -hmm. over that period of time, yeah. 30 years was it, yeah. something like yeah. that, how, how is it never like um, categorised as a civil war? Um, because, because it's, to me, my naive understanding, it kind of fits all the yeah. categories yep. of a oh, civil it, war. It was a civil war. I have read an American documentary or about here that it was called a religious war. Religion was only the identity. Protestants wanting to remain British yeah. and Catholics wanting their Irish freedom, what would be Irish. It's all about that identity. As you know, the big book of both Catholic and Protestants, there's not that many much of a difference. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. Well, basically, we are centre between the Shago Road yeah. and the Falls Road. Yeah. So we are. We have peace walls that stretch from the back of that wall, uh, that church, yeah. right up to that mountain. Yeah. Two point two mile long. Yeah. And each of them, each of the, the four gates on that wall, all closes between half seven at night and half past six. Yeah, so I, I was doing some reading before I flew yep. last night, yep. and I thought they wouldn't be locked anymore, they'd almost be symbolic. No, no. That really surprised me. These are, these are in these acting, days, they're still locked. Yeah, these are acting, working peace walls. They keep the peace. What I'm going to do is, we're going to go into the Protestant neighbourhood, go around to the peace walls, the international walls, and then round into Bombay Street, one of the most famous streets in Belfast, associated with your troubles. And then we're going to end up at the Clannard Monastery. So if, if I was, say tomorrow, if I come to wander around these streets yep. of the day with yep. my camera, yep. what's, the, what's the reaction I would receive these days in 2024? Um, not a problem. Our visitors to our city are, are left at their own devices. It's very, very rarely we would get crime against our visitors. If a Catholic was to walk over here, yeah. he would feel uncomfortable. Yeah. And with him feeling uncomfortable, Protestant mom would know. So, so some some people said to me before I came that I could I should quite freely because I'm English, even yeah. though I have I have no religious yeah. affiliation, yeah. Um, that I would I would be fine to walk around the Shankill Road, but if I walked around the Falls Road being an Englishman, I should be wary. Well, but is that is that a little bit over fabricated? I, 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 this day and age, yeah. This is the main Shankill Road here, yep. and everyone on this side of the wall is 100% Protestant. Yeah. They all want to remain British, and they're proud British men. Yeah, probably more prouder to be British. Yeah, I British heard that people. before I came out. And and yeah. to be honest, there isn't as much pride in Britain these days. Yeah. Um, as much national identity, Britain yeah. is changing a lot. Yeah. Um, so maybe this is one of the proudest well, British oh, yeah. areas of, yeah. oh, of yeah. oh, modern Britain. This area is called the Lower Loyalist Shankill Estate. Loyalist being loyal to the British British crown. And these would be these would be all Protestant working class around here. These would be living in the same conditions as their Protestant neighbour or Catholic neighbours. Yeah. Just over there, less than a quarter of a mile away. Yeah. And they've got more, as I told you before, they've got more in common than they have apart. During our troubles, we had organisations. We called them the paramilitaries. You would have heard of a lot of them: the IRA, 
the INRA on the Catholic side. You have two organisations on the Protestant side, the UDA, Ulster Defence Association, and they were formed in 1970 to defend the Protestant people. They were the men who would have, who would have manned the barricades. And then you would have had the UVF, Ulster Volunteer Force. They're here from roughly 1910. And they were, they were, they were mobilised to fight against home, the Home Rule Bill. They're still, them both organisations are still with us to this day. Whereas on the Catholic side, they've only got one organisation, the INLA. They're still with us. The IRA, as you know, in 1998, basically the British government demanded that they went into history, demobilise and decommission their weapons. And that allowed their political party, Sinn Féin, right up to the top political table. The UDA and the UVF, they didn't have a big political party with big support. So there wasn't a great deal of pressure put on them. So they kept their weapons, they kept their structures, and they're still with us to this day. Factions of the UDA still control this area. They've still got their guns, their military structures. You see the two gun, gun men pointing their weapons at us. These have got the Mona Lisa effect. These two gun men will point their weapons everywhere we walk. So these people that like in living this house, for example, wouldn't have a say. How, how would how would they feel about? Was this all here before they moved in? And well, made up in, but yeah. you you wouldn't have a say. You would have maybe the, the local OC commander of the area would maybe knock your door on a Friday afternoon and said, a couple of boys are going to do this yeah. on Monday morning. That is a statement to, yeah. to the people of this area and us guys coming in here. Yeah. This mural here is dedicated to one of the superheroes of this community, one of the defenders of the community, and his name is Stephen McCaig. Now, he was like thousands of other unfortunate young lads were born into our troubles. He was born in the year 1970, just as our troubles began. And so he never knew peace. He would have seen the attacks and atrocities on this Protestant community by the Catholic IRA. And he seen it as his duty to fight back. Were you a child when, yes. when all this was going on? So you, was, you grew up seeing yeah, these things? Yeah. Yeah. I would have been roughly about nine years of age. I've seen, I seen the, the burr naked sectarian society that we, we lived in. Yeah. And but to you that was just normal? Normal. Because you, whatever you're born into, I guess yep. you normalised, don't you? Now, on these, on these little journeys that we were in, Graydon, we could have seen up to 150 British soldiers, maybe another 20 to 30 armoured vehicles, yep. roadblocks and every, every main road where we would have been stopped, yep. searched, Question: What our purpose of business being? I've been allowed through or turned yep. away. Yep. Or and or maybe arrested. If you, you could have been if arrested if you were if you, you you were a bad boy. Directly in front of us, you're going to start seeing the start of our peace walls. Yeah. This is the very bottom end of it. And you would have the Catholic Davis Flats. Yeah. And the Catholic St Peter's Cathedral. The main falls road. It's less than about 40 metres at the other side of that wall. And we're, we're still in the Shankill we're Protestant still in, area. We're still on the yeah. Protestant side. Just for me to get my head around yep. the geography, we're, yeah. Yeah, we're still on the Protestant side. Now, you would have had Catholics living, this is Dover Street, you would have Catholics living right as far up here. Yeah. And all them streets going that way. If you would imagine that maybe 100 metres, 200 metres of a gap right up there, that's where all our trouble began in 1969. Basically from Dover Street, yeah. Percy Street, right up the Cooper Street and Bombay Street. Yep. Crossland Street's up there as well. And any street in between it. And that's where one community basically attacked another community and then the retaliation attacks happened. And what was happening was when, when people, with these drunken mobs or whatever you want to call them, we would have called them the Paisleyites, follow, followers of Ian Paisley. They were coming down, racking w windows, kicking in doors of the Catholic homes and the Catholics were fleeing. And as the Catholics were fleeing, they were burning their homes down. The Protestants who would have lived closer to the Catholics, they started abandoning their homes because of the trouble. They would have fled into their own community. So their homes were being burnt down. Yeah. And that's why we had both communities losing homes. Yeah, yeah. So these days, because this is this was such a historical yeah point of yeah. everything flaring yeah. up. Are people quite happy for their children who live in these houses well, to come and play in this yeah. park? Yeah. Like under under the shadow of, of that 
in that big wall. What's this saying? Well, this, this would have been Andrew's flour mill. Yep. That stands nigh, right in the centre between the Catholics and the Protestants. So this is in, I mean, is it fair to call it a bit of a no man's land? Well, no man's land. That would, yeah, that would be your no man's land there. You will see Protestant homes on your left hand side and Catholic homes on your right hand side and this wall yeah. rolling right up their back gardens. So Protestant, yeah. Catholic, Catholics, yeah. and literally that wall yeah. is the it's divide. Separate. This is the bottom end of the wall and there was a recent survey done 18 months, months ago and neighbourhoods, people from the neighbourhoods right around this wall were asked Put their views on it and 90% of the people want this wall capped up okay because yeah. they feel safer now that Catholic there can look out a shade window at his Protestant neighbours yeah he doesn't know anything about them yeah they've got different cultures different traditions and they these people are quite happy to be like that yeah no yeah no contact whatsoever so, so, so the opinion of most in this area is if this yeah, was pulled down yeah. overnight, and that's there right. would be flare-ups. Oh, 100 percent. Yeah, right across. But this used to be a crossing point here. The street yeah. that we're sitting in here is Percy Street. Percy Street goes out directly on the Falls Road, and it would have would have been straight back behind us here. And this is one of the first streets that would have been attacked and seen the the, the most serious troubles. My words can't describe the horrific scenes you'd have seen here. Families fleeing from their homes under gunfire, the houses being settled, the barricades coming up. These were horrific scenes. This is the start of one of our longest single stretches of the walls. You will see scenes of still trouble here. Can you see the, the burn mark up yeah, there? Yeah, well, they were the, the grey, yeah, yeah. They were from petrol bombs that are thrown over. Like recently? Yeah. Within this last, well, there's some up here from last summer. Yep. You know, but what I can't tell you, just because we're on the Protestant side, doesn't mean it's just the Protestants throwing them over. Whatever goes one way will come the other way. Yeah. Maybe yeah. twice as twice as hard. Yeah. You know? And so occasionally there are petrol bombs going yeah. over that wall. Over. Even though it stands at 18 meters. Yeah. And there's more mark there. Yeah, yeah. And if you look over there at the blue fence, can you see That's another one? That's where one hit the fence. Yeah. yeah. And you will see that as we go up. We call this ground zero. They would have used this street, Cranmore Street, to get into Bombay Street. Bombay Street runs directly behind So here. Bombay Street is directly behind directly this behind wall. That. Yeah. And that, was, that is known as the 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 turning point, the burning of Bombay State, the first major incident where, where we crossed that line. We couldn't come back after that there. And we you would, we would have had Catholics living as far down as maybe the Embowards are. Yeah. So the mobs would have come up here and racked and destroyed every home. And then the homes were being burnt as they went along. They get into Bombay Street and something like 90% of properties in Bombay Street was completely burnt down. The people in both communities feel safer with these walls up, even though there's still young guys from both sides will come up here, maybe stand here. Yep. They'd be anti-social, we would call them anti-social types. They would get a couple of beers with bricks and throw them over. They yeah. don't know what they're throwing at. They've got no idea what's behind no, there. No idea. And them stumps will come back. Yeah, yeah. This you know? Yeah, and both ways, yeah. like not just from yeah. this side that yeah. way, it, it yeah. could start the other yeah. way too. It could start, yeah. but that's, it's just because we're starting here, yeah. I mean, we visually can see it, yeah. You know, but this would be this is actually bigger and longer than the Berlin Wall. And when do these close? At half past seven, half seven tonight, yeah. yeah. And there's no crossing whatsoever. So I'm literally I'm in the Catholic side now, yep. And when I cross this, yep. this gate, yep. I'm now in the Protestant side, yeah. I'm what a lot of people don't know when they're taking out of here. This is our peace wall. This is part of the peace wall. And right behind that is a, a, a primary school, a Catholic primary school. They are actually on the peace wall. We're on the Catholic West Belfast. 
this would be the Springfield Road. Yeah. And believe me when I say these are like two different cities. They've got different cultures, different traditions. And and if a Protestant man came here, he would feel in fear. Yeah. They were, they were, he, he made sure it, it wouldn't be this big of um, panic, but inside th there would be a fear. He knows he's in enemy territory. Yeah. And likewise, if a Catholic man goes over to the Sanko Road. Yeah. Sanko Road. Where you're standing here is probably one of the most synonymous streets associated with the beginning of our troubles. This is called Bombay Street. Yeah. And Bombay Street was left in devastation. My my own words can't describe the horrific scenes you're witnessed here. Families fleeing from their homes. Did you were you here? Did you see it when it happened? No, I would have lived in North Belfast. Yeah. But the exact same thing happened in my family home in 1970, in a place called Newport Street, over in North Belfast. Yeah. Um, where families had to flee from their homes. You would have got fathers, sons carrying whatever belongings they had. You would see the barricades going up, you'd see the houses being burnt. These were all caught in camera by the newsreels, and that's why Bombay Street became so famous. This happened here, Horsey Street, Yeah. Street, Dover Street, and right along Conway Street as well. This was happening right, right along here. Yeah. Our two communities basically went to war from here. In 1988, we, our violence... 88? No, 1988. Yeah. Our violence increased, and we had this big increase in this, our community's fighting. Now, our walls got higher, our walls got longer, and things like this here was erected around back of homes. Oh, jeez. Yeah. Wow, I didn't, I mean, it doesn't It doesn't shock me after what I've seen so yeah. far. So these are people's back gardens. Yeah. It's like a prison. Yeah. It's like if you, a... If you just look up, up the back alley in the And that's to stop petrol bombs, nail bombs, blast bombs, and sandy devices getting thrown into the back of these homes. So, so when a petrol bomb comes over yep. from that side, yep. we're, ne we're now seeing on this side, the, clou yep. the houses are much closer, yep. that's going to go yep. through someone's back window, yep. or the very best yep. into their backyard. Well, you did see the petrol bomb stands up there. Yeah. And basically, this is where, where, where it's aimed at. Yeah. Now, I have no doubt that that young Protestant guy, whoever it may be, who threw that pattern pat wall, had no inkling of what's behind here. He thinks he knows. Yeah. They're the Catholics of throw, but he's no idea. Yeah. It could be a disabled person, it could be children. You know, we had an incident here in the late, uh, I think it was roughly about 1998, or roughly about that time. It was during, uh, between 86 and 98, during the drunk play standoff, where some moron, lit a petrol bomb and threw it through a single woman's home and burnt three three little boys all in the ages of pain. They were burnt to, to death. You know, I don't think he set out to do that, but that's the consequences of doing things like that. Yeah. And that's my fear here too. Now this is repeated right across Belfast, where Catholic and Protestant homes are built to these walls. I can tell you this from my own personal experience. Belfast Men, uh, men and women are probably the most friendliest and welcoming people that you could meet. And you could get a guy from this side of the wall here, go to Spain for his fortnight's holiday, and meeting up with the man from over there. And they could stay in that bar for two weeks, having the best of crack, the best of fr friends when they're away. It's just when they're in this. Bobby Sands. MP. Yeah. But most importantly, because he's a poet at the Algora, a revolutionary, but more, more importantly to the people of Brown and these areas, he's an IRA volunteer. Bobby Sands died on the 5th of May 1981 after 66 days of hunger strike. Maggie Thatcher dug her heels in and refused to speak to Bobby Sands, even though he's an elected member of the British Parliament. She was coming out with quotes like, I shall never talk to the criminals, criminals, criminals. Um, if they want to commit suicide by starvation, so be it. In death, he's now known as the most famous revolutionary in the whole world. His image is used by other revolutionary groups yeah. around the world. And there's streets, buildings and parks named after him all over the world. The ten hunger strikers who died in 
1981, their sacrifice is being gained now because we now live in an equal society. Yeah. And the likes of Sinn Féin, who didn't really focus on mainstream politics, started getting into politics when they seen 30,400 people yeah. voting for them. Yeah. You know, so they started to focus on and was basically led by a peace process. We have a, a society that's as near as normal and as peaceful as that we get it. It's as near to peace that I've ever seen in my lifetime, yeah. that I ever can remember. Yeah. People don't know that with Jerry Adams being the MP around here, every photograph and every interview that he done was done from around here. He would have stood here, yeah. just here. Whereas he had Bobby Sands on his left hand shoulder, yeah. Sinn Féin logo and the Irish tie on his right hand yeah. shoulder. This mural has become the most photographed mural in the whole world. This is the building that brought us our peace. Now, it wasn't announced to the world that we had the peace deal in place from here. Out of them negotiations, we had two people that won the Nobel Peace Prize. One from each community. The civil rights activist um, and nationalist John Hume and the moderate unionist leader Sir David Trimble. They were two good men that brought our communities together and led the way forward for us. I told you earlier on about my family losing their home, home in 1970. We left that home that night. Mother, father, four boys in the back. We were in our pyjamas, my mother's handbag and my father's car. That was all that was saved. And my father taught me a very, very good lesson as I was growing up. Never let hatred build its, it's home in your heart. We move forward in life, we don't, we don't look back. Yeah. Me and my brothers got into sport at a very young age. My father encouraged us, we get into sport. And I have both Catholic and Protestant friends through that sport that remain friends to this day. Yeah. I had no differences. Yeah. I might support a different football team. Yeah. I might have a bit of banter with them guys. Yeah. But deep down, we're, we're only human beings living in this cesspit yeah. and we're coming out of that together. Yeah. So this is Madden's Bar? Madden's Bar. One yeah. of the most traditional pubs yeah. in Belfast, yeah. yeah? And one of the most friendliest bars too. Yeah. Round the corner there's another one called Cali Sellers. Yeah. One of the oldest bars in Belfast. And it's similar. All, 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 both communities would use this, even though it has a nice thing. Yeah. But both communities would use it. But what I want to show you is, when we come into one of these bars, we can't get in. You got to buzz in. You have to get buzzed in, and it's a no security. So are they looking at us now still? You think? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Oh, I know. I was, it was freezing. It was snowing. It's been brought to my attention that 51% of the people that watch this channel watch on a TV. Now you may ask the question, Wendell, what's that got to do with anything? Why is that statistic important? Well that's a bit of an anomaly when it comes to YouTube channels these days. Most channels they get 70-80% of their views from mobile phones or laptops. But not this channel, most people are watching on a TV. But what that does mean is that maybe a lot of the people that are watching the videos, they aren't logged into their YouTube account. So you can do me a favour folks, I'm going to put a QR code on the screen now. I'm going to leave it hanging up here and if you aren't signed in to your YouTube account when you watch me, then you can't subscribe. And I don't normally ask people to subscribe on my videos. I find it a bit cheesy, a bit cringy. But I really think we can get the subscriber count up on this channel. So you can take your mobile phone now, open the uh, camera, the camera part of your mobile phone, and hover it over the QR code here. And then that'll bring up the option to subscribe to my channel. And it'll do me a massive favor if you can click that button because it notifies you whenever I put up new videos and it helps the channel grow. So thank you so much. I hate asking for people to subscribe. I promise I won't do it again for a good while. And to be honest, I feel a bit dirty now I've done it. Back to the video. So I'm now here in the Shankill area right by one of the peace walls. And yesterday, when I went around on the tour with Henry, it was all a bit of a head spin, to be honest. I'd just arrived off the plane. And he, t he took me on the Catholic side to the other side of this gate. And I believe those are the houses where they have, on the Catholic side, 
because they're so close to the peace wall. They have all the gates over their backyards in case anything's thrown over. But you can see how close these communities live together. What's life like living so close to the peace wall? In life here is very, very quiet. Really? Yeah. yeah. You wouldn't hear on on July when it's the marching season. You wouldn't hear any discord about this place. There's not a stone through or or nothing or no chanting over the walls. No. So it's not. It is absolutely fantastic. It's okay. Very very quiet. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. This is the quietest place I've lived in Belfast. Really? Yeah. You've moved yeah. around a bit. Yeah. Yeah. So in in terms of like flare ups and things like that, you these days. None. These not an days. issue now, for you. In the early seventies, yes. Yeah. So that's why the that's why the wall has went up. Yeah. That gate hasn't been opened since it was erected. What do you see of Belfast these days? It's quieter, so it is. You've no you've no fear of anything really kicking off. Would you go down onto the other side of the yeah. wall if you need to? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So things have definitely. Yeah. But yeah. The only thing you'd I, I wouldn't be doing is wearing a ranger's top. Yeah. And go and say shank are on the walls. Yeah. So it advice. Uh, likewise, you, you wouldn't, you know, like people over there, they wouldn't advise to come over here in a Celtic top. It just wouldn't no. wouldn't be a good idea. No. It could just antagonise people, yeah. and it would, it would, it would cause trouble, yeah. more trouble. As long as you don't ram religion, politics, or football down me, I'm all right. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, um, yeah. I, I think there's a lot of people like that. There's been plans that haven't come to fruition about the walls coming down. But I think the target was 2023, and obviously we've passed that. Yeah. yeah. How how do you feel about them coming down one day? Are you, are you happy for them to continue? I would be happy for them to come down because as long as they don't start talking religion or anything like that, I would be prepared to have them walls took down. There's never a stone or a, or golf balls or anything through that wall. It yeah. was hard times at the beginning of the trouble, so it was. Yeah. You didn't know who to trust. So there you go, you see that gentleman who literally lives opposite one of the, you know, one of the main parts of the Peace Fall that divides the Shankill Road area with the Falls Road area on the Catholic side. And he says things are pretty peaceful, living right there next to the wall. This perception that Catholics lived in the ghetto and Protestants had everything they hadn't, Protestants had nothing either. The perception, this here perception, one lived in, in squalor and the other one lived... So there was a lot of poverty on both sides? Correct. Yeah. yeah. The reason why these people have a wall is because they don't want any annoyance. And yes, there was burnouts on either side. If you grew up to Ardoyne, friend's grandmother, she was burnt out in Harrington Gardens. They always talk about all the burnouts in Conway Street and all. You know, the Catholics were burnt out. Yeah. It happened everywhere. Yeah, yeah. I can remember leaving school and protesting all. I can remember that in Stormont back in 70, the early 70s, about 74 or something. Yeah, we all walked out of school. I was only about 13. What were you protesting then? About the whole system. Everything, yeah? Yeah, about their nonsense over there. When were you born, my friend? 61. 61? Yeah. So you were born just before everything really started to get really heated? Yeah. 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 So as, as, a, as a boy of maybe eight, ten years old, you remember the oh, troubles yeah. erupting in Belfast? I remember my chum's in your mind? grandmother getting burnt out. Uh, I remember some of my chum's. One of my chum's, get, he got shot dead. He got pulled out by the hair. Up in Old West Circular, you know, where the petrol station used to be? Yeah. Because he was wearing a stable belt, British Army stable belt. How old was your friend when that happened? He was uh, 19. And then another guy. Um, neighbour up the street, he was 18, he was in the RUC, and they shot him with a shotgun. Here you can see the new build houses that some of the residents further down were telling me have been built about 10 years or so, and you can see the view that these people have from their front windows. One of the dividing peace walls. When they open their curtains in the morning, this is the view that they're used to. You can see here, folks, that there's a new development of 49 new build homes right next to the Peace Wall. 
So here in Belfast, building houses right next to the iconic dividing wall is seen as, as no issue. Surprisingly, when I started researching this trip, I couldn't find a great deal of content in this vein of people coming into these areas like the Shankill estate and like the Falls Road estate over the wall and interacting with people and I wondered why that was. I reached out to some people that I know personally that have visited Belfast for the same reasons to learn more about what the communities went through in the Troubles and they all told me that they felt relatively safe in the day in these areas. They are working class areas that do have some social problems so sometimes in the evening it's best not to wander around these areas but in the day I felt relatively safe. These are infamous areas because of the historical connotations of what happened but at the same time there are people living in these areas that just want to get on with their day-to-day -day lives. As for safety and all, you know, it's staying on. People, obviously it's like everywhere else, you're going to have your erupts and your downs, aren't you? Oh. Do you know, so... Yeah. You're good in your pod, you yeah, you're good in your pod, obviously, you, 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 everybody knows everybody. People always have their own, their different opinions and stuff until they actually see it. That's why, so there's, that's why there's so many tourists come to Northern Ireland and come to the Shangle. Not just the Shangle, but... Up the falls yeah. as well, do you know the orchard of the peace name? As we walk down Northumberland Road, away from the Shankill Road, we walk past what are the last of the murals on the Protestant side of the divide. Just above the gates there we can see the last remaining Devis Tower, which is a sign that we're walking into the Catholic side of this part of Belfast now. And here are the gates which mark the uh, start of the divide. We walk through this area and then very quickly we'll see the tone and messages of the murals and signs on the walls. They'll change and they'll become more Catholic orientated. I was actually really surprised when I learned over the last few days that the gates are still locked at night. I didn't think that would be the case anymore. In between the gates here you can see Gate there, designating the Protestant side of the road. Gate here, designating the Catholic side of the road towards Falls Road. And here in the middle, this is kind of a no man's land between the two. And the mural here is very much dedicated to peace rather than taking any side in any disagreements. Here we're on the direct opposite side of the gate that we could see when I was speaking to the gentleman who was sitting outside of his house on the Protestant side. This is the back of the houses we could see there from the view from his house. This is the last remaining part of the Divis estate. This is the Divis tower that's left. This was a much larger estate which was a place where many Catholics lived not far from the Protestant areas over there. And this area has been redeveloped and most of the area has been knocked down now, maybe 20 years ago or so. But this is the last remaining Divis Tower, which is quite an iconic part of the Catholic community here on the Falls Road in West Belfast. What's life like in this area these days? I think it's pretty settled and I think, you know, the people are happy enough now uh, and if the wall could be taken away, it would be great. Yeah, it yeah. It would be great, you know, because they're only human, we're only human, you know, and we should all get on well together. So I, I've been speaking to everybody that I speak to about whether they would like the wall to come down or not. I know that there was a plan for it to come down in 2023. Obviously, that hasn't come to pass. Yeah. Um, most people I speak to are happy with its presence still, and then I speak to some people that, that would like it to come down. What are your thoughts? Um, I would love to see the situation where the wall, there's no call for a wall. That, you know, 
let's live in harmony, let's live, let's look after each other, don't yeah. you know? When we were younger, we had the freedom of the city, basically. And then we had the troubled times of the city where you were more or less restricted to your own area. And now, and now we're in the third phase of where we have peace and people are getting on with their lives and one thing or another, you know? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So in, in general, is it is it quite peaceful now? Are there flare-ups now and again? Um, being Northern Ireland, I would say it could flare up again. But at the same time, it's good the way it is at the moment, you know? So everybody that lives in this area would be Catholic? Yes, Yeah. I, I would think so, yeah. 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 Personally, when you say everyone living in this area is Catholic, why, why does it have to be religion? What religion that other person is should be no concern of mine. Yeah. And, and no matter what God I want to worship, well, so be it. Yeah. Let me say something. You know, we have centuries of history and that emulated right through to today. You know, the invasion by different authorities coming to Ireland. I'm not only emphasising one, but there were different people coming to Ireland. And that, that has generated down through the centuries, you know. St. Patrick tried his hardest, but he didn't. <laughs> well, he's still working on it. Yeah, thank <laughs> okay. you so much. Thank All you for best. talking to me. Yeah, you have a good day. It's your mum's house, yeah. yeah. But I, Our son was the first son shot in 16, Patrick Rooney. Really? Yeah. So this lady here, her, her son was Patrick Rooney. Yeah. yeah. So she's been through it all, yeah. Yeah. How do you see things now? How do you see where Belfast has come to in 2024? Well, not better than what it was. The younger generation growing up. Yeah. I wasn't like them, I was supposed to see what we went through. Do you think the wall, the peace walls can eventually come down? No. You think they'll always stay? Mm -hmm. Would you like them to stay? Yeah. What's life like in this area these days? Oh, it's brilliant. Yeah. I wouldn't change it for the world, but I've lived in this area all my life. Okay, yeah. So, so you grew up through the Troubles? Yeah, I grew up Earth's Court Street, a couple of streets down now. You can go anywhere, you can do anything, you, though. <laughs> Do it your own time, stuff like that. Or no, it's it's pretty nice. It's pretty for everybody, most people. Yeah, so you're quite happy with life oh, in God. Belfast these yeah. days, yeah? yeah? Especially in the Falls Road area. Oh, yeah. In terms of, like, the divisions between, like, Protestant and Catholic these days, as a young person, what's it what's it like going around Belfast? Do you feel pretty safe wandering around everywhere I, and keep yourself feel, yourself? I feel safe. Like, I just don't... I don't bother real out there Catholic. Wherever you are, you are. I just don't care. I just see him as a person, and that's about it. Like, I don't... See them as Hun, I don't dislike them for being a Hun, I just if they, they're nice, they're a nice person, that's it, Catholic or not. I'm walking away from the Falls Road area now, walking through the gates of the Peace Wall from the Catholic side of this part of West Belfast and into the Protestant side here. And how did I feel walking around the Catholic area? Pretty much everybody I spoke to was quite welcoming, quite happy to talk to me. Let's walk back to the city centre now and see what life is like in the centre of Belfast, which I'm told these days is very much seen as a neutral zone where both Catholics and Protestants can meet up, do whatever they want, pretty much. Let's check out the city. I just can't imagine what it must have been like for some of the people that I've spoken to today. People in their 60s, maybe a bit younger, who grew up when the Troubles were in occurrence. These communities are so close together and the powder keg was always there to erupt. I can't imagine the sense of paranoia that the people must have experienced here and how over time they must have become used to that paranoia, they must have become habituated by it. City, around city centre is nice. Like, how do, you, how do you find Belfast in general? 2024 as, as a place to live as, as a younger man? It's getting better. Yeah. Like, I grew up coming in and out of Belfast, and my dad was from Belfast. Um, compared to what it was even 10 years ago, like, the food scene's brilliant. But no, Belfast's brilliant. It's worth a visit. Do you know what I mean? Like, 
years ago it wouldn't have been. Walking around the city, it does seem to the eyes of this visitor that the centre is immune to the sectarian issues that affect the neighbourhoods that I filmed in earlier. Plenty of sightseeing and tourism going on. Everything's clean, well kept, and no murals or graffiti that I've seen that are harbouring any sectarian intentions. So is there a lot of homelessness in there's Belfast? There's a lot of homeless, there's a lot of yes, uh, there druggies, there's a lot of alcoholism running in this. Oh my God, tell there's no it. help for the homeless. There's not a single bit it's of hope for have. As homeless people in Belfast, city centre sleeping at night, yeah. is it safe or do no, you? No, dangerous, yeah, do you can no, no, no. imagine. So what sort of things happen? Yeah, someone's giving you a smack, yes, yeah? Yeah, yeah. What was that about? Just, just for land, sleeping on the streets. Land, so you were just asleep and somebody got, yeah. Yes, Pyramel just took my home off me. I don't know where to go anymore. Okay. I hope to God this goes live. No, my mum used to say before she left this planet Earth, Robert, son, you need to look after num your, your own. There is no help. There is no help for homeless people. There is. So there you can see, folks, that I, I, I haven't seen as much overt homelessness on the streets of Belfast as I have seen in many other UK cities, but it's not immune to those problems. Time for Wendell's final thought. What have I made? of Belfast and what have I learnt? Well, I don't think one short visit to this city can give you all the education that you need to fully understand the heartache, the loss and the sheer agony that this city went through during the Troubles. I think that I know a little bit more and I understand that there is still some hatred on both sides, but a lot of want from both sides of the coin to move forward and to make this a comfortable city to live 2024 and onwards. I'll also say that in many ways that's already been achieved. There is still some division and the fact that the peace walls are there and still needed and by many still wanted shows that there are still divisions in the society. But I think it is so admirable and commendable of the people of Northern Ireland, of Belfast, that they've got to this point after such heartache, bloodshed and terrible, relatively recent events. I feel a little less ignorant than I did before I arrived. I feel that I now understand a little bit more about what happened on my doorstep during the last 50 or so years. And I think that it's really important that I've gained some understanding and listened to some of the people that went through the terrible times of the Troubles. Thanks for watching folks, I hope you found it of value and I hope that you understand at the very least that this city has been through a lot but it is moving forward and trying to look for a much more cohesive brighter and more peaceful future. Until next time folks.